Hi there, this is Emmanuel Amonatagi, and this is another R walkthrough. This time we're going to talk about Quant Mode, a financial package in R. Um, again, the code is on uh, my uh, website where I have a bunch of um, walkthroughs uh, along with more details. So um, uh, the link should be there in the description, and it's also here, amonatagi.github.io. So, uh, the, uh, the the talk here is quant mode, and uh, we're going to look at two things uh, in this walkthrough. First, we're going to look at a very high level of a few things that quant mode can do, especially uh, uh, how you can get some really nice charts, uh, some really nice indicators uh, in just like three lines of code with update uh, daily uh, stock market data. And then we're going to delve into a more quantitative system. We're going to model uh, using uh, data we got from quant mode and see if we can predict uh, if the, the volume will go up or down uh, in the following trading day. Okay, so let's go to R. So first thing you need to do is uh, load quant mode. Let's just get the, pull up the help file here. So QuantMo stands for Quantitative Financial Modeling Framework. And it does a lot of different things. Um, and I'm barely scratching the surface here. So one cool thing it can do is it has the, the get symbols uh, function. So we just simply call get symbols. And we're going to pass it a list here. We're just going to pass it a single element, Amazon. And there you have it here. So open this part a little bit more. So basically, it just loaded. Uh, years of Amazon daily stock market data and I can prove this by going to head AMZN there you have it so this is the the earliest it goes so 2007 and if you go tail it should be today's date with the 11th of November and as you see it brings the open the high low close volume and adjusted price as well, of course, as a timestamp. And this is what's cool about it. So a very simple way. So if, before we do this, this, well, let's look at this one first, okay? You have the bar chart function where you pass the symbol you just loaded, um, a theme, and the type of bars you want, right? And there you have it. So it shows from 2007 how, uh, what Amazon did and basically just went up. You know, when I see that, I just wish I had bought some. Um, and you can actually even call it just bar chart with nothing and just get to the defaults and let's see what that looks like. And it's the same thing except uh, with a with a black background and multiple colors and it looks like this is a, a an open high low close. Um, we're also going to pull, let's pull in another symbol here and this is GSPC. So um, here let's go back to the walkthrough. We're pulling the data here from Yahoo. So you need to uh, know Yahoo symbology. So here in the walkthrough, you have finance. The, the links are in here. Uh, in this case, it's finance.yahoo.com lookup. And here we're going to bring it up. And here you basically can type whatever you want. I say you want to know more something about NASDAQ. And here are your symbols, right? So if you wanted the, the NASDAQ composite, it would be uh, hat, I, X, I, C, or anything. So, you know, I can, for example, oh, I like IBB. I can then go back and then go instead of that one, pull IBB, and here, let's just display it. And there you have it, IBB, right? So now we basically have loaded three symbols. We have IBB, we have GSPC, and we have Amazon. So GSPC is the S&P 500. So uh, I loaded it already. And here we're going to use a slightly different um, a function called chart series where we pass it. And we, this one, you can pass a subset. So we only want the last three months. And here you can really see the candles come out. And it's a, it's a shorter period. It still has, uh, you know, volume and all that good stuff. And this is a good looking chart and literally two lines of code. Now we're going to do, um, we're going to add a Bollinger Band. These are some of the built-in um, uh, functions it has. We're going to say a 20 period Bollinger Band and there you have it, the 20 period Bollinger Band. And you can also have, they also has functions to uh, create your own custom indicators which we're not going to look at here but it's pretty powerful. Again, this is for somebody who wants to, uh, you know, uh, who likes to uh, display charts in a visual way. You can put pairs, you can put groups, it can do a lot of things. 
Uh, and that's all I'm going to show about this higher level. Now we're going to dive a little bit deeper into um, into uh, uh, more of a quantitative um, area of quantum mode. We're going to use it, first of all, to pull all the stocks that compose a NASDAQ 100 index. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. This is just a, a list. Now we have all the stocks. And then we're going to pass it this entire list to get symbols. And it's actually going to do exactly that. It's going to go, it's going to go to, it, the, all these get symbols go, go to Yahoo Finance, and it's downloading it from there. Here you'll notice that it's saying pause one second between requests for more than five symbols. So this is actually a quant mode that's throttling us, and that's a good thing, because uh, Yahoo would probably just uh, bump us off. So uh, it knows how to throttle. So it basically, you can get a large amount of stocks. You can get the entire, all the symbols from the S&P 500 if you wanted. Uh, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to pause the video here for a while because, uh, you know, it's got to go through 100 symbols. Okay, so we got the, we downloaded the, the data uh, of the 100 symbols uh, from the NASDAQ 100. Uh, it took a good five minutes, so be warned. Um, it's not a, a very fast process. So we have everything. So now we basically, in memory, we have all these data sets, over 100 data sets, and that's not gonna quite work for what we need. So we're gonna need to merge everything and into one, um, uh, one data set. So we're gonna use the XTS, and for those who are not familiar with XTS, oops. It's a, uh, uh, it's a handy uh, 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 it's got a bunch of functions to help you with your time series. So what it's going to do here is it's going to um, uh, merge all of these symbols into one big grid uh, by uh, timestamp. So of course uh, we saw that Amazon goes all the way back to 2007. Not all of these symbols go back to 2007. Some you know uh, got created later. So uh, and, and other other stocks were halted or you know what whatever the story was. There's going to be a bunch of empty spots and those will be uh, the, those will be filled with NAs and that's okay. Just be forewarned. So we're going to put everything. What's important is to get everything into one data set so we can actually work with it. It's done. And let's look at here. Just a few of them. So here we have uh, all of the apples and a few of the adobes. So this is what we have. So we have um, the apple open, high, low, close, volume, adjusted, and then it goes to adobe. So basically we're having a, a very large data set, very wide data set I should say. So let's see. So, you know, it has uh, only, uh, you know, un under 2,000 rows, but it has um, 624 columns. So it's fairly big. And we're, we're going to make it even bigger. So what we're going to do here is we're going to um, build a vocabulary of stock market moves. Uh, this is going to allow basically collecting a whole series of patterns that we're then going to use to, um, to see uh, if we can predict uh, future events using these patterns. So in this case, this is this is entirely arbitrary. We're going to pick Pfizer and the volume of Pfizer. Okay, uh, it could be any any other one. Doesn't matter, and it doesn't have to be just the volume. The volume uh, gave a a better AUC score uh, without having to dive too deep into it. So that's why I picked it. But you know, with a little bit more work, it would work. It would probably would work for closing and opening, and would make some great a great trading system. But in this case, this is going to be our outcome symbol. And we're also going to use, um, here I've called XTS here, but it should have been called earlier. Uh, keep that in mind. Um, we're also going to, uh, in order to get the, the, uh, the outcome, right, we're trying to predict what the volume will be tomorrow. So today we're trying to predict what the volume will be tomorrow. So the way we're going to do this, we're gonna, again, we're going to use XTS. And we're going to create a second uh, Pfizer volume column, and we're going to shift it back into time so that uh, each row will have the day's volume of Pfizer and tomorrow's volume of Pfizer. And, and here, not to make this code too complicated, we're basically going to you know, get the lag of, uh, of our outcome symbol, which is 
Pfizer volume and we're going to say if tomorrow's volume is bigger then make it a 1 if tomorrow's volume is smaller then make it a 0 so we'll end up with here let's just run this so there just basically a typical outcome. So this is pretty cool because we're, we're creating our own uh, data set for machine learning in which we need to um, create the outcome, the response variable, the dependent variable. In uh, most um, uh, you know, competitions and data sets, you already have that outcome. And it's good to know how to, uh, especially in time series, how to create one. You're basically peeking into the future. And this is just for the purpose of training, right? Because in real life, you're never going to have that, unfortunately. So now we created a new column in our data frame called NASDAQ 100 called outcome. Um, and we need, now we're going to remove this. Now we have the outcome. We can actually remove uh, the one we shifted. We just need to have one. Um, the correct one. Then we're going to, uh, we're going to cast the, the dates to a real date field, because I think it's a character currently and we're going to order it in a decreasing order. And this is important for what we're going to do next. So here's a function. Let's get a little more space here. And this is how we're going to build this vocabulary of, um, of stock market moves. We're basically going to compare today's market uh, against yesterday's, today's against two days ago, three days ago, four days ago, a week, and so forth. So the function defaults to 10 days. So basically, it's going to subtract to, um, today with um, 10 days ago and it could kind of give you the move that he has done in the past 10 days um, and then and we can also round it that's another thing we want to do we want to round it so that um, uh, we um, uh, we're going to use these if we round them they're going to be more um, common to each other so basically a move from Yahoo uh, will will be will be uh, compatible with a move of Microsoft, for example, or let's say a move of Google with Microsoft. Google is a huge amount of money. Microsoft is a lot less money. And uh, by scaling them, scaling these 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 moves uh, and and rounding them, they're going to be compatible with each other. So um, uh, basically, we're building a huge vocabulary that should be applicable to any stock, not just limited to uh, the the size of the stock, the original size of the stock. Okay. Um, okay, let's see. Um, so we round it. Uh, we, we sorry, we, we round it. We scale it, and then we uh, subtract um, the 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 current day with whatever we're looking back. And here is a call to this function. So just uh, I want to keep this high level, but definitely go into the code and dig into it deeper. So here we're going to call it. Uh, we're passing at our uh, our big data frame, and we're saying we want you we want you to give me uh, to create new variables with the differences from one day, two days, three, four, five, ten, and twenty days, right? So it's going to come back. So let's you know let's call all this. This takes a little bit of while too because it's going to go through a lot of of symbols. And, and the way I'm doing it here is definitely one way. There's about another million ways you could do it if and, and uh, maybe find some, you know, even more profitable ways. Uh, well, not even more, because I'm not saying this is profitable because I have no idea. But um, it definitely takes a lot of experimentation. Um, and we're gonna also going to remove, remember, we're, this is in decreasing order. So, uh, you know, row one has today's date. We're going to delete today. Why? Because we don't have the outcome. We It's not going to be of any use for training because it doesn't contain uh, uh, a, uh, it doesn't contain tomorrow's data for which we can learn from. So we just remove it for convenience. And here we're going to take a quick look at what we have. So I'm doing a grapple on Yahoo just to see the Yahoo variables. And now what? Remember what we had before? I think I still do. I still have it here. Let's see if we still have it. Just to take a peek. Nope, it's gone. Okay. Basically, we had you know open, high, low, close, volume. Now we have um, open one day difference. So we basically have the scaled uh, 
uh, current day. And now we have the differences of one day, two days, three days of the open, the same thing for the lows, the same thing for the close, same thing for the volumes, the same thing for the adjusted. So basically we, you know, we used to have what, five, six uh, uh, data points. Now we have, you know, a lot more. Um, we need to do one more thing. We now need to, um, uh, we're going to add, this is an easy one, we definitely should add it, right? The, 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 because we're going to try to predict tomorrow's volume or the next day's trading volume, it's important to add, you know, the day of the week, thinking that Monday's volume will be heavier than Friday's volume. Same thing with the, the, the year and the, the month, right? Uh, something in December versus something in, in, in January will be different. So we're going to add these as extra variables. And then we're going to shuffle it. And I don't know if this is necessary to do. We could keep it in order. You do get a better score when it's in order. So uh, that makes me suspicious, and I prefer to shuffle it. And, um, and so, yeah, so, so I remove the date field because that's, they're all unique. It's not going to help us out. But um, uh, we... Uh, 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 we 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 are, we are extracting extracting some intelligence from the date, right? Okay. Okay. Now we're going to model this. Let me get some space here. We're going to use the XG Boost model. Uh, it's a great model. It's it's got a lot of uh, tunable features, and it's very fast. And we're going to use a logistic uh, version of it. So to test this, we're going to. Um, okay. Let me just get my predictors here. So these are these are all our predictors. So it's everything minus the outcome. Um, it just is a convenience to send it out afterwards. We're going to split our data set in um, 70 and 30. So we're going to train on 70% and test on 30%. And these I've tuned them. Okay. So this is kind of thing you loop through each one of these uh, uh, features. Uh, you know, called grid search, where you look for the best combination. And this this, this gave some a decent combination here. So we're going to go with this, and let's run the model. It's running. I don't think it will be very slow because there aren't that many observations. There are many uh, features, but not that many observations. Here we're done. We're going to predict now. We're going to pass our test. And finally, we're going to see how well we did using the AUC. And there we have it. We get a score of 0.73 on the AUC. So remember, an AUC of 0.5 is random. Uh, you can't get any worse. And an AUC of 1 is the best. You can't do any better. So we're doing pretty well with 0.73 for something that uh, with very little tuning, right? Uh, we just basically created a vocabulary of market moves, stock market moves, basically taking the difference between a series of days, one day, two days, etc., up to 20 days, and try to see if the volume the next day was uh, higher or lower. So it definitely is showing some accuracy here. Not great, but definitely a uh, 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 room for uh, improvement and encouragement for, for trying different things because it does look like there's something there. Um, so uh, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and um, I will um, uh, post again the, uh, the, uh, the URL for uh, the walkthrough and the entire uh, code base. Hope you found this helpful. Thank you.